2025 was a massive year for SpaceX Starlink. Not only did they double their subscriber count, at the same time they improved speeds, expanded access, and lowered prices for customers. And although 2025 had a long list of accomplishments, Starlink is just getting started, and their 2026 year plans are even bigger. In this video, I'll recap the accomplishments that made 2025 such an impressive year for Starlink, and we'll look to the future and why I think 2026 will be a step change year for Starlink with even bigger and better plans. Let's start off with, I think, Starlink's biggest accomplishment of 2025. They doubled their subscriber count. They increased their customer base by 4.6 million people. And that brings the total to just over 9 million as of right now. That means that in 2025, they added the same amount of customers they did in the previous four years of the service, which is insane, really. That is such rapid growth that, that is truly remarkable. That impressive growth was fueled by a variety of factors. Starlink added 35 new markets this year, bringing their total to around 155 countries that Starlink is available in. Another factor contributing to this insane growth is the reduced pricing, both for Starlink equipment and for the monthly service plans. So for example, here in the United States, in most areas, you pay $0 upfront for your equipment now. When I bought Starlink, it was $600 for the kit, and now it's free for new residential users. Starlink is also expanding availability of cheaper service plans. They launched the residential light service plan in the United States in 2025, other markets as well. Residential light is $80 per month. That's $40 cheaper than the normal residential plan. And with that, you still get unlimited data, just deprioritized data leading to some slower speeds during peak hours. For travel and mobile customers, the equipment price has also been reduced. The Starlink Mini, which is insanely popular, has been reduced in price to under $300 now. And they've also added some additional plans like Roam 50 gigabyte for just $50 per month and the popular standby mode. Standby mode is just $5 per month. It gives you unlimited low speed data. You're throttled to around one megabit per second up and down, but it's perfect for backup internet and travel internet. Something that will allow you to keep your mini online all the time, maybe on the top of your vehicle, on top of an RV or at a seasonal cabin. Direct subscribers of Starlink internet service aren't the only ones benefiting though. Starlink says that they have served over 40 million cruise line and airline passengers in 2025. A lot of big names have joined with Starlink to bring their service to airlines and cruise ships. For example, Alaska Airlines, United Airlines, Carnival Cruise Lines, and Royal Caribbean, just to name a few. While Starlink doubled their subscriber count in 2025, they actually managed to increase performance as well. And that's the second accomplishment that I wanna talk about. The global median speeds have increased by more than 50% in 2025, all while doubling their subscriber count, which is quite an accomplishment. The global median peak hour download speed is now over 200 megabits per second, and typical upload speeds are around 30 megabits per second. The global median average latency is 26 milliseconds, which they've improved massively in 2025. And I wanna emphasize, these are peak hour speeds when Starlink network is being used the most meaning these are the worst case scenario speeds. If you test during off peak hours, for example, I just did a test this morning and I got over 400 megabits per second download on my Starlink residential service. So these are the worst case speeds and we're still averaging around 200 megabits per second globally. This will of course vary by market and how many other Starlink users are in your area, but generally we've seen a huge increase in performance both on the download and upload and of course latency as well in 2025. So how the heck do they double their subscriber count and increase the performance of the service? A lot of that has to do with accomplishment number three, which is that SpaceX launched 120 Starlink missions in 2025. They launched over 3000 of their current generation satellites in 2025, which is a record launch cadence for SpaceX and Starlink. And that's one of the reasons why we have expanded coverage, expanded availability, while also improving speeds at the same time. In total, the constellation of Starlink satellites is now over 9,000. And during the year of 2025, they were launching at a cadence of around 70 satellites per week. Starlink also launched an impressive line of hardware in 2025. So first off, they launched their new performance kit. The Performance Gen 3 is Starlink's enterprise grade terminal. 
and it is capable of one gig speeds according to Starlink. That of course is dependent on the version three satellites coming online this year sometime in 2026. But as far as the hardware goes, this is a terminal that enterprise customers will be able to buy. It's $2,000 and it enables those one gig speeds in the future. Something that you can buy now and then know you're basically future proof for network performance upgrades for many, many years to come. I did a review on the performance antenna if you wanna see all the details about that. So check out that video. But as far as consumer terminals go, we didn't see any new hardware this year. We're still using the standard Gen 3 for residential home services and even mobile applications. And of course we have the Starlink Mini as well that came out in 2024. That's been updated a little bit, just some cosmetic changes here or there, but it's still the, the basically the same antenna that we saw in 2024. And that has proved to be incredibly popular, which is why Starlink has also introduced several new accessories. In 2025, we saw the introduction of the Router Mini. The Router Mini is an ultra compact mesh Wi-Fi router that can pair wirelessly or wired to your existing Starlink system to improve your Wi-Fi coverage. And at just $40, the Router Mini boasts an impressive cost to performance ratio. Starlink says this is the best cost to performance ratio that they have in terms of their Starlink routers. They also launched the mini 12 volt adapter that allows you to take your mini on the go and power it from a 12 volt car outlet and the mini travel kit as well. They also launched the advanced power supply kit for the standard antenna. That is just basically the power supply from the performance kit in a compatible package for your standard kit in case you wanna be using a third party router and replace the Starlink Gen 3 power supply and router in your kit. The next accomplishment for 2025 is the completion of Starlink's direct to sell network. Starlink now has over 650 direct to sell satellites in orbit, making Starlink the largest 4G provider in the world. Through partnerships with mobile carriers like T-Mobile in the United States, Starlink direct to sell is available in about 22 countries and is accessible by over 400 million people around the globe. Direct to sell is like having cell phone towers in space. The Starlink direct to sell satellites literally beam down a 4G signal that your unmodified cell phone can pick up to be able to provide texting, voice, data, and even video directly to the Starlink satellites and then connecting back to your carrier network. And what Starlink direct to sell has done is essentially eliminate cell phone dead zones. As long as you have a relatively clear view of the sky and a compatible phone and cell phone plan, you'll be able to connect directly to Starlink satellites when you lose your traditional cell phone signal and be able to continue to text, call, and use limited amounts of data, even in the most remote places on Earth. Starlink says that they have about 6 million active monthly users of their direct to sell service. And in 2025, they've added over 30 direct to sell optimized apps, including Google Maps and WhatsApp to enable video, voice, and data, something that wasn't available in the beginning of 2025, but is now available through those optimized apps. So those were the big accomplishments for Starlink in 2025. But there's a reason that I say 2026 will be even bigger. And you may be asking yourself, how is that even possible? I mean, they doubled their subscriber count, right, in 2025. Well, it all comes down to what's on the horizon in 2026 with the version three Starlink satellites and Starship. Starship is SpaceX's newest launch vehicle. It is the super heavy rocket that can handle super high payloads. And what this will enable Starlink to do is launch their brand new V3 satellites. The V3 satellites are going to be a complete game changer for not only the Starlink broadband internet service, but also Starlink direct to sell. Starlink V3 satellites have 10 times the downlink capacity and 24 times the uplink capacity of the current version two mini satellites that Starlink is deploying. Additionally, the Starship launch vehicle will be able to launch a lot more satellites than the current Falcon 9 can, meaning that each Starship launch will add about 60 terabits per second of capacity to the Starlink network, which is a 20 times improvement over the current Falcon 9 launches. V3 satellites will also be deployed at a lower altitude, leading to better latency. And lastly, the V3 satellites are gonna enable those one gig download speeds that the performance kit is capable of. So that really is the key there. To, that is the network upgrade that Starlink is talking about in 2026. And all of that to say that the V3 satellite is the future of Starlink. It is going to enable 
a huge upgrade in performance, not only speeds, but latency as well and capacity. So right now Starlink's dealing with a lot of capacity issues where in some areas they just have too many people wanting to sign up and not enough network capacity to go around. Starlink V3 satellites and Starship to launch them are the answer to that and it's a big reason why I'm excited for this upcoming year. But that's just the Starlink broadband service. Direct to Cell will also get a massive upgrade with Starlink V3 satellites. Right now Starlink Direct to Cell broadcasts a 4G signal down to Earth to connect to unmodified cell phones. Starlink V3 direct to cell satellites will turn that into a global 5G network. And Starlink says that their direct to cell 5G network with some of the recent Spectrum additions that, that SpaceX has bought will turn their direct to cell system into something that's comparable to terrestrial 5G. So faster data connections, better voice, better video connections in the most remote places on Earth with your unmodified cell phone connecting directly to a satellite above. With all those changes coming for 2026, Starlink is getting prepared. And they say they plan to double their production of Starlink kits. So right now they're producing around 8 million Starlink kits per year. And they plan to increase that to more than 16 million per year in 2026 as they ramp up production. And not all of those kits produced will be sold to new customers. Some of those kits will be replacements for older equipment that has failed, or maybe existing customers are replacing their kits with brand new Starlink kits. But still, producing more than 10 million kits a year, or even up to 16, 17 million like Starlink plans, is just crazy. It is definitely a piece of evidence that they plan to serve and add millions more customers in 2026, potentially even more than they added in 2025. Now, speaking of new hardware, one of the big questions that everyone always has is when are the new Starlink kits coming out? Right now we have the Gen 3 Standard and the Starlink Mini. Those are the consumer antennas. The Gen 3 Standard has been out since late 2023. I think it launched in December of 2023. So we're over two years now with the current standard kit. So I definitely expect Starlink to come out with something new this year in 2026. Definitely something to take advantage of the network upgrades that are going to be happening with the V3 satellites. And there's also evidence that a new Starlink Mini could be coming out this year as well. We don't have really anything concrete to, to share or report at the moment, but I definitely do expect in my own personal opinion and speculation that we'll have something new in 2026. With all of Starlink's success, that also translates into some accomplishments for this YouTube channel. So let me take a moment to give you a, a few brief stats from 2025. We had over five and a half million views on the Digitech YouTube channel in 2025, and that accounts for 303,000 watch hours that you guys have watched of my videos. So I really appreciate it. We've seen about 18,000 subscribers added to the channel this year, and we're just under 45,000 at the time of this video. So I really appreciate you, all you watching and supporting the channel, those of you ha that have subscribed and continue to like, share, and comment on my videos. It's been an amazing ride. We rebranded this year from Starlink Hardware to Dishy Tech, since I'm going to be covering more than just Starlink as Amazon Leo comes online in 2026. So again, thank you so much. It's been amazing to be able to make content on Starlink and other satellite internet systems for you. And I hope to continue that in 2026. So to recap this video, 2025 was an amazing year for Starlink. Doubling your subscribers while also improving internet speeds by 50% and expanding your coverage area is just an, an insane accomplishment. I think 2026 though is going to be a much more exciting year with Starship, with V3, with all the enhancements that will come to the Starlink satellite internet service as well as their direct to sell service. So I hope you'll join me in covering Starlink in 2026 and seeing what happens. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any updates from me. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Have you noticed those speed increases in 2025? Especially if you're an older Starlink customer like I am, I definitely noticed going from you know 2022 where I got under 100 megabits per second to today where I speed tested at over 400 megabits per second. The progress has been amazing and I'm as happy a customer as ever. So let me know what you think about Starlink's 2025 progress and 
2026 ambitions in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.